the Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. Handing over of the Olympic flame to Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne of the United Kingdom by the President of the Hellenic Olympic Rallos. obedience of the horses and, and the, in a sense, the accuracy of the driving and the, the way they did really basic movements but doing them accurately and, and exactly, which it sounds relatively easy, but in fact when you try and do it, it drives you up the wall. I, I started driving because I'd been playing polo and I, I decided that I would give up polo when I was 50. I happened to be 50. And I was looking around to see what, what next, you know, I don't know what there was available. And uh, I suddenly thought, well, we've got horses and carriages and grooms. I said, well, why don't I have a go?
It's all about repetition and practice. We've all been training so hard, practicing with all linked together, and that's been the most important thing. I think it was on the line. I think, <laughs> amazing. We have a little challenge for you. Right guys, can we do a ball change please? You grab the first three and roll them just like that. Feet shoulder width apart and just have your hands down there and then to feed, that's it, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Good catch. Are you allowed to do that? Oh, yeah, are you allowed to do that? That's good In point. Australia, they would catch it, but here in Wimbledon, they don't. Yeah, oh, okay. you're not meant to catch it. You're meant to let it bow and then get it, but good catch. This is our first time training here at Wimbledon. Being, like, even in the complex is really nice. Making friends and being on court is really exciting. Yeah, I bet. Is that supposed to be me picking them up? <laughs> Any tips on my serve at the same time are very helpful. The serve looks good. Has this always been Wimbledon's way? Yeah. Like, is there sort of a manual? Well, when I took over from Anne, Anne had been there for 20, 30 years, and they'd always done the ball change a certain way. Yeah. They've always done the feed. Yeah. The feeding they find very hard, because I think there's, there's no other sport where you sort of deliver with a straight arm, apart from cricket. One of the things that's noticeable about us is the speed in and out of their position. I only actually noticed this a few years ago. When you look now on the outside courts, the most worn patch on the court is the position of the ball boys and yeah. the ball girls because the, the traction that they're getting when they're sprinting in and out is just it's mm -hmm. huge. This is proper practice. I'm really impressed. Roll through to the feet, person at the back will receive, and then everyone shuffles down one. All the discipline and everything like that you've learned from here, 
you'll be able to take in into so many other different parts of your life, things like confidence, and as you're saying, being, you know, that feeling of pride being on any of the courts actually is such a big moment, so it's a good choice. No cramping now. <laughs> to see the training and the dedication and the amount of time that's put into training and making sure this sort of goes well on the day for the champions who are playing at Wimbledon, it's, yeah, it's incredible to see it behind the scenes. So thank you, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Well done. Prince William has narrated a short film to be played at football matches to encourage fans to take care of their mental health. It will be played just before kickoff at every FA Cup third round match this weekend and features some of football's biggest names. In life, as in football, we all go through highs and lows. We can all sometimes feel anxious or stressed. At moments, even the little things can seem a struggle. As head of the FA, Prince William has worked with Public Health England and his own Heads Together initiative to send the message about mental health. It only takes a minute to get started. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chauncey. Uh, Catherine and I are, as always, delighted to be here with you all today to celebrate the incredible achievements that Coach calls apprentice over the last decade. Sport has an incredible way of providing hope, connection, and opportunity. And when Coach Call was established ahead of the Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2012, it was designed to use that power to help change young people's lives. Since then, more than 750 young people have been supported through the program, with 600,000 sports sessions delivered to 8 million participants. We are both so proud of all the remarkable progress that has been made. To all the Coach Corps apprentices, we want to say well done and also thank you. We all face barriers and challenges in life, and these can sometimes take incredible bravery to overcome. Not only have you faced these down, you have positively impacted the lives of others along the way and inspired many, many more. We are incredibly excited to see what the future holds for all of you. Catherine and I also want to express our thanks to your employers and your learning coaches for their ongoing support and belief in you. A huge number of individuals and organizations have helped Coach Call realize their ambitions to provide more opportunities for young people year on year. It's more than we can meaningfully say. Invictus Games have become about much more than the thousands of competitors who have taken part. Invictus has become about the example of service and dedication our competitors have provided to the world. A new generation of service and you are the role models to us all. And you are going to put on one hell of a show over the next week.